axes to be considered in the design. Now that we have all the variables required by the formula P equals QGCP minus QI times GCPI, we can now calculate the design pressures for each load cases. Wind load cases are Case 1, external pressure 1 minus positive internal pressure Case 2, external pressure 1 minus negative internal pressure Case 3, external pressure 2 minus positive internal pressure And Case 4, external pressure 2 minus negative internal pressure To visualize the effects of internal pressure, Case 1 can be analyzed by the following figure Initially, the structure will be subjected by external pressures in each surfaces given by the general formula QGCP. When the positive internal pressure builds up, it will add up to pressures in each surfaces. On the other hand for case 2, after the structure expands due to positive internal pressure, it will shrink back again causing negative internal pressure. Same process will happen for both case 3 and 4, the difference is that these two cases uses the second value of external pressure CP2 for roof. Now, going back to case 1, let's calculate the design wind pressure in each surfaces. For windward wall, we can build the following table to clearly present the wall pressure since pressures in this wall is variable with Z. Here we use Q equal to QZ for each elevation Z, G is constant to 0.85, CP equal to windward wall coefficient which is 0.8, QI equals to QH, and GCPI equals positive 0.18. Values of pressures P is calculated using the general formula and stored at the right side of the table. Values of P are all positive meaning pressure is acting towards the wall surface. For leeward wall, we will use Q equals to QH and CP equal to leeward wall coefficient which is negative 0.5. Using the formula again we get P equals negative 2232 pascals. Pressure is acting away from the wall surface since the value is negative. Then for side wall. Using Q equals to QH and CP equal to side wall coefficient of negative 0.7, we get P equals negative 2860 pascals. For windward roof. Using Q equals to QH and CP equal to windward roof coefficient CP1 which is negative 0.6, we get P equals negative 2546 pascals. And for leeward roof. Q equals to QH and CP equal to leeward roof coefficient which is negative 0.401 we get P equals negative 1922 pascals. Knowing all the surface pressures we can draw the wind action for case 1. Pressure in the windward wall varies from 1.566 to 1.697 kilopascals acting towards the surface. For leeward wall, negative 2.232 kPa acting away from the surface. Side walls, negative 2.86 kPa. Windward roof, negative 2.546 kPa. And for leeward roof is negative 1.922 kPa. Case 2, external pressure 1 minus negative GCPI. All variables used are the same for case 1, except that negative 0.18 will be used for the value of GCPI. Updating the tables and recalculating using negative GCPI, we can get the values of P for each surface. Knowing all the surface pressures we can also draw the wind action for case 2. Case 3, external pressure 2 minus positive GCPI. Wind pressures in walls and leeward roof is the same as that in case 1. But for windward roof, we will use the second value of external pressure CP2 which is negative 0.09. By doing so, we can get P for windward roof equals to negative 946 kPa. Knowing all the surface pressures we can draw the wind action for case 3. Case 4, external pressure 2 minus negative GCPI. Wind pressures in walls and leeward roof is the same as that in case 2. But for windward roof, 
we will use the second value of external pressure CP2 which is negative 0.09. By doing so, we can get P for windward roof equals to positive 382 kPa. Knowing all the surface pressures we can draw the wind action for case 4. Displaying wind load summary for wind acting normal to rich. Design wind pressure acting parallel to rich. Here we have to recalculate the values of the wind external pressure coefficient CP, since the wind direction already changes. For walls, using the same table we used earlier, we can get the values of CP but using a new value of L over B. Since the wind is now parallel to the ridge, L is now 60 meters and B is taken equal to 36 meters. We can get L over B this time to be equal to 1.667. For windward wall, we get CP equals 0.8 for all values of L over B. For leeward wall, since L over B is between 1 to 2, we have to do some linear interpolation between the given values. By doing so, we can get CP equals negative 0.367. And for side wall, CP is negative 0.7 for all values of L over B. For roofs, we have a new value of H over L, since L is now 60 meters. H over L equals to 8 over 60 or 0.133. Selecting wind direction parallel to ridge and H over L less than 0.5, we will fall under this part of the table. We can see here that we have two values of CP for ranges 0 to H over 2, H over 2 to H, H to 2H, and greater than 2H. Having all values of CP ready, we can now calculate the design wind pressure for each building surface. We also have four loading cases for wind acting parallel to ridge. For case 1, external pressure 1 minus positive GCPI. We have here a tabulated results for windward wall pressure evaluated at 0 to 10 meters. Here we use Q equal to QZ for each elevation Z. G is constant to 0.85, CP equal to windward wall coefficient which is 0.8. QI equals to QH. And GCPI equals positive 0.18. Given all variables, we can fill in the table using the general formula. For leeward wall, we will use Q equals to QH and CP equal to leeward wall coefficient which is negative 0.367. Using the formula again we get P equals negative 1815 pascals. Then for side wall, using Q equals to QH and CP equal to side wall coefficient of negative 0.7, we get P equals negative 2860 pascals. For roofs, we'll use Q equals to QH. CP equals to CP1, calculated earlier which varies with distance 0 to H over 2, H over 2 to H, H to 2H, and greater than 2H. Knowing all the surface pressures we can draw the wind action for case 1. Pressure in the windward wall varies from 1.566 to 1.965 kPa acting towards the surface. For leeward wall, negative 1.815 kPa acting away from the surface. Side walls, negative 2.86 kPa. For roofs. Distance 0 to H, negative 3.487 kPa. H to 2H, negative 2.232 kPa and the rest of the roof is under negative 1.605 kPa. Case 2, external pressure 1 minus negative GCPI. All variables used are the same for case 1, except that negative 0.18 will be used for the value of GCPI. Updating the tables and recalculating using negative GCPI, we can get the values of P for each surface. Knowing all the surface pressures we can also draw the wind action for case 2. Case 3, external pressure 2 minus positive GCPI. Wind pressures for walls is the same as that in case 1. But for windward roof, 
we will use the second value of external pressure CP2 which is negative 0.18. By doing so, we can get P for roof equals to negative 1229 kPa. Knowing all the surface pressures we can draw the wind action for case 3. Case 4, external pressure 2 minus negative GCPI. Wind pressures for walls is the same as that in case 2. But for windward roof, we will use the second value of external pressure CP2 which is negative 0.18. By doing so, we can get P for roof equals to positive 100 kPa. Knowing all the surface pressures we can also draw the wind action for case 4. Displaying wind load summary for wind acting parallel to ridge. In addition to our directional wind load cases, the following cases should also be applied to consider all other wind direction not normal nor parallel to ridge. That concludes our manual calculation. In the second part of this module, we will use a spreadsheet called RCB Wind Version 3.1 to calculate the structure's design wind loads. Thanks for watching.